Yeah, good evening, everybody. Before we start with the um, third panel, Living Memories, Artistic Positions and Memory Policies, I just want to announce um, uh, the structure of the evening. So uh, we try to finish uh, until uh, 7.30. Uh, between 7.30 and 8.15, uh, we will have the closing remarks. Also, Thomas Krüger from uh, Bundeszentrale für politische Bildung Agency for Civic Education in Germany uh, is, has arrived. Um, and after that, we have a reception upstairs in what we call the club of the academy with some drinks and uh, some snacks. So you are very much welcome to go there if you stay, of course. And <laughs> um, it's... Uh, for me, it's a big honor and, uh, and a great pleasure that um, we uh, have two uh, wonderful artists from, from Windhoek, Namibia, here in Berlin. Um, Isabel Femuna, right? Not 100%. Uh, um, Katja Vivi um, and Isabel uh, Munyama. Um, sorry? Uh, 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 Trixie, sorry, uh, I, was, uh, I was so confused by uh, the pronunciation of so your second name, so, but uh, I tried it, uh, um, uh, I'm very, very honored that you, that you took the energy to come here. Um, uh, I had the chance, together with um, uh, a lot of uh, these people who, who went in, in March to, uh, to Windhoek, uh, to see the works of, um, of Trixie and, and Isabel. And um, what is so, um, so uh, important and um, such a, a strongness inside that they are taking in their way up topics which we discussed uh, the whole afternoon and that they created another access uh, to the history and that they made this point which is also very common to us in Germany to what is history, what is a cultural memory, what is a collective memory, what is a individual memory, where is memory um, uh, archived, so is it the archive, uh, such an archive as we have it in the Academy of the Arts or is it the society, is it the landscape, is it the, the body of uh, each of us so questions like that are coming up, and so it's a, it's a very, very strong impact on, on our discussions, which is um, represented by your works. Um, I think everybody has seen uh, the uh, installation work of uh, Isabel Katia Vivi, They Tried to Bury Us, uh, downstairs in uh, what we call the black box. Um, and I would like to start with your work, Isabel. You are a visual artist. You are, in the same time, uh, a researcher. Uh, you have uh, two positions, one in terms of research of history and uh, uh, social life. On the other hand, the artistic voice. Um, just can you give us um, a short impression uh, how you came to this, to this installation, uh, because I think it's a very crucial work, uh, which has a, a deep impact uh, on the discussions in Namibia too, and, um, and uh, which is a very, very impressive statement, uh, which is touching also us on another level than on an intellectual level, on post-colonialism or something like that. It's, it's a very concrete, um, um, uh, access to what memory means and how memory is related uh, to, uh, to the social and um, to the um, um, collective memory of a, of a people. Um, evening, everyone. Um, I just want to sort of start by explaining um, my family, in essence, or why this is a very personal and important uh, subject to myself. Um, so my father was raised by his great aunt, Maria, and um, this is the woman who raised him, and a lot of my uncles were also raised by their grandmothers, and these are people who survived the genocide, um, the Overero specifically to, to my family. 
Um, and so it's their stories that have always been passed down to us, to my family. Um, and essentially I see it as a responsibility that I have. Um, so within my family um, and well, within all the communities affected, this is very much a living memory. Um, and it's this memory that's really much in our genetics, um, both the memory of it as well as the trauma of it. And essentially, here sitting today, I'm the fourth generation descendant sharing this story, sharing this history. Um, it's affected my family uh, in a lot of ways, um, but sort of talking about how this history is very much present in our present day, um, <clears throat> being displaced from the genocide sort of split my family apart. Um, and so even present, I can see my father being so different to his sisters and brothers because they were raised in various different areas within the whole country because of this history. And just from that single act, I can see just the difference in terms of privilege that is given. My father was able to be raised by someone um, that ensured that he had his education and his drive to do what he needs to do, where you know, a complete opposite, my uncle, his brother, uh, had no advantages and essentially drove or led him to complete poverty and alcoholism. Um, and so you just see that. And another thing as well is just how the land issue that we have been speaking about um, is very personal because I cannot view my grandfather, my father's father, I can't go and see his grave because it is on private land. Um, I have uncles as well who are buried on pri German private farms and I have to ask permission to go and pay my respects. Um, so it's very current, very present, these things that we have to deal with. Um, I hope you've all gone downstairs <laughs> to the black box. It's another interesting factor that the fact that it is in the basement these bodies are hidden away. Um, I know it's a space that was available, but, <laughs> but you know, there's connections there um, very much to our remains that still live in archives and collections and hidden spaces. Um, <clears throat> so essentially, the genocide and that history has been very much discussed in my family. I come from a family of writers and historians and researchers, so it's always been a topic of discussion at dinner time or whatever. Um, but I went on sort of a journey around the country, not to all the areas, that still needs to be done. Um, but the biggest thing, the biggest shock for me was just the lack of any identification. Um, I started off mainly around the Waterberg area and you come across a German cemetery, well looked after, very pristine, just you know, because the German community in Namibia, they have an association that looks after these things and they put money into these things. Um, but there's no information about exactly what happened, you know, not even for the Namibians there, but even for tourists who come and have holiday in these areas. There's nothing. So no one's even aware of what happened in those places unless you come from these communities where you are told these things. Um, and just a big question came up, and that was, where are our bodies? You know, not all of the remains were taken away to have you know, extra scientific experiments done on them. But if you're thinking of mass killings or mass build uh, uh, battles that occurred in these spaces, the, where are our bones? Are they still underneath our feet right now? Or were they collected and thrown somewhere? These were the questions that I had. So initially, the first piece, um, that I did in 2017 uh, was called The Past Is Not Buried. And it was a grave of an individual woman. And she, like the faces downstairs, was buried and unburied. So I play a lot with that, um, to sort of just allow that, or to sort of represent that this history that we speak of is very much unresolved and unfinished and not really always spoken about. Um, but that hopefully there is an emerging of this information, of this history, um, to show that this is very much something that we need to deal with. Um, and so from that point, then I had an exhibition in Winterclast year called 
um, they tried to bury us. And it was, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I, instead of doing bodies and everything, I decided to just sit, focus on a face, an individual face. And um, the face that is there is my face, uh, because this is very much me speaking from my perspective. I don't want to impose um, you know, someone else's views or anything on that. This is how I decided to explain this history. Um, and another thing also, I didn't want to make molds and casts of other individuals because there is again that historical connotation where the researchers of eugenics were in Namibia and doing scientific experiments and putting casts and molds on people you know, without their consent or anything, they're just forced to. And so it had a lot of that history. So I just decided that my body is the one that I can actually speak from and use in this sort of instance. Um, <clears throat> in essence, I try to sort of create a scene that is very personal and specific to Namibia using our sand and our grass. But as I start to travel around, obviously um, I can't transport grass and sand. <laughs> Um, but I felt that it became very much a scene that was universal and um, something that a lot of people can connect with. A scene like that has happened throughout history and within the whole world, essentially, having bodies laid and just left. Um, yes. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm trying to remember where I am. And so as I continued um, exploring this and gathering and specifically choosing sand to work with, I started realizing apart from the, the living, the, the oral history that is passed down um, as one example of how you know, we keep these, these stories alive, I also started to realize that the sand or the landscapes being you know, the sites of where these atrocities happened were also landscapes of memory. Um, we walk past them, we don't really even interact with them sometimes, but our blood dripped into that soil and is there deep down. You know, our bones are deep down in there. And so I started, real I started taking a lot of close-up photographs of the sand and this idea that, they, that our memory, our history is in that grain of sand. Or in the cracks of the bark of a tree, the tree that was downstairs in one of the images is in Gaudepo which was a tree that was used for hanging people during that time. And just also just is so huge in its presence. And you have houses right behind it. And this is, you know, we live amongst these things. These are not things, you know, in a distant memory or anything. We live in this. Um, <clears throat> another example, there's an image in the artwork downstairs as well, was the, um, these huge boulders, these rocks. And that's an area called Omaru. And uh, to this day, uh, you can walk amongst there. It's not safe. There are spiders and snakes. But when people do, um, you can still come across um, a, a bullet or something. And, you know, so this is still, these, the remnants of all this violence are still very much present and lying there. Um, and so I, I don't know if any of you walked on the work downstairs. That was a big thing when I had it in Namibia last year, was that the whole room was full of sand. And so you couldn't go and see the work unless you participated. You were forced to leave your footprints on the work. You were forced to be a witness of this. And I think that's one big thing that I think the art can do, is doing, is that you know, because not everyone comes to these sort of dialogues or conferences and everything. Not everyone goes to galleries, you know, so it is also still a select group of people who see these things. But it's just an extra way of sharing the story. And, um, well, what I'm hoping that my work does is um, <laughs> connecting with you emotionally, you know, allowing you to feel a slight, you know, I mean, you'll never feel what Namibians feel. <laughs> in that situation, but allowing you to understand what that emotion is. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Isabel. It's uh, working very, very strongly, and as you said, uh, in a universal way. Um, 
I just want to, to, to make one point. We are talking about visibility. Uh, and so the whole story is not visible. And, uh, uh, and what you are creating is a kind of step-by-step um, uh, step to create a kind of memory which is becoming visible and um, which is connected to the landscape. And uh, this is something what I, 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 I remember very strong in, in, in these 10 days in, um, uh, in, in Namibia. You, you have the impression that you are walking on a colonial ground. And this is a very heavy, uh, very tough experience. Um, and you are creating in, in works like that a kind of, of, of visibility. Um, and probably it, I, I just want to ask you, how do you deal with the, the landscape? And this is one point, that landscape also has a memory, uh, nature. And on the other hand, you, you, I think you, you want to go into a direction um, uh, what we could call uh, community work, so to involve the communities in different places into this research work. So what we call an artistic process is becoming a social uh, participa uh, participatory uh, process of transformation. Could we describe it like that? Um, yeah, I, th well, I think that's the direction that we need to go in, is involving the community. I know that there has been work done on collecting oral histories, but obviously not everything has been collected, and some communities have been left more silent than others. Um, but in my personal work, um, so in my thesis right now, I'm, the idea is that I'm creating ephemeral installations in landscapes of memory uh, to commemorate the genocide. And through my work so far, I had started by collecting sand from these areas, and I also realized that I'm sort of repeating something in that, even though I want to m emphasize the point of the importance of the sand, I, by removing it and taking to a gallery, I'm doing exactly you know, what, what had been done. And so now I'm trying to just uh, create my work within these spaces. And also, instead of it being for people within the capital, it's more, again, for the people who live amongst these things. Because even for myself, I live in the capital, and for me to go out into these spaces, I am, you know, um, what's the word? I don't know, imposing myself on their story. Because it's not, what happened there isn't necessarily, it's not my story. What happened to my family was somewhere else, you know? Um, so I have to be very aware of that and very conscious of that. Um, and so uh, after this research that I'm doing, my idea, and I work a lot with, with, with art therapy and the power of you know, therapy and healing through the arts. And so what I'm hoping to do is use, well, just find a way to allow um, or to navigate um, the, the communities to actually physically make the work themselves, to physically make what they feel like needs to be shown, how they feel is the best way for that history to be you know, memorialized or represented. Yeah, I don't know if I no, it's very, I think it's very, very clear concept, uh, and it has to do with the living memory. This is not a fixed thing. It, it has been to be transformed again and again uh, in relation to the place and in, in relation to the community. And um, I, I just want to, to make the bridge to, to the work of Trixie uh, Munyama. Trixie is, um, is a dancer, a performer, a choreographer, a teacher. Um, uh, you also have a very strong social aspect in your, in your work. Um, and um, the interesting point is that you are using, we can talk uh, about that later, images, installations, but you are using the body. And uh, so it's a very strong dimension which is coming, um, uh, which is becoming relevant to, to your work, um, uh, that the body is also a container of memories and um, which is related to, to, to the history and to the, uh, to the contemporary situation in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the society. I had the chance to see the morning citizen uh, as an installation in the city of, um, um, uh, of Windhoek. Um, and um, 
you had very short time, and it was an amazing event. Um, you brought nearly, uh, my impression was you, you brought the whole art scene together. <laughs> you, uh, there has been so many voices, and um, it was um, um, connected to the feste, so to the, to the um, center of the German power in, in Windhoek. Um, and uh, you worked uh, with projections, with uh, also um, um, Isabel uh, worked with um, uh, the um, they want to bury uh, as an installation uh, as a as a open air situation, but in the center has been the performance, and so I. I um, uh, I just want to hear more about your access to this field of um, uh, of colonial past and injustice, um, uh, how you deal with it, and um, and how the body, what is the place of the body inside? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, the point of departure where I would like to to, be, to begin this this conversation is that. In, in 2015, when I started researching about the genocide, and I asked my dancers in the, in the dance company that I'm, uh, I direct if they know about uh, the genocide, and about six of the dancers who are the majority in the company have no idea. And these are what we call born freeze. These are the, 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 um, the after independence um, children of, of um, our Namibian history, and they had no clue about it in detail. Even I didn't know so much about it until I went deeper into, de um, into researching the work. I had conversations with various um, voices within the space and who are knowledgeable about the, about the genocide. And so the, the first um, rendition of, of my work, The Morning Citizen, the first version, was about to bring about an awareness of, of for better if I like a word, uh, um, to, to bring about the awareness of the genocide. So it was a very, um, the first one was a very gruesome and in your face kind of work. We had the, the extermination order by, Fon, by, by Von Trotter uh, actually read out in German. We had the, the images from the archives of you know, the decapitated heads um, on, the, on the projections. So it was a, a, a raw and um, shaky, shaky uh, presentation of the work. So the next, the second version of, of, the, of the work, The Morning Citizen, took me to a, a place of how do I then reclaim my history? Because the, the first history is told from the, from the German side. And the, even the right to, to mourn has been told from that, from, the, from another perspective. And from, from an Africanist spiritual point of view, uh, we, we, we recognize that, that that part was taken away from us, that ownership of our, of our right to mourn and our right to, to, to bury our dead with dignity and to honor our ancestors, to honor the dead with dignity and some kind of honor was taken away from us. And we don't have the luxury of, of having, uh, like here you have the Schindler's List movies, Hollywood movies commemorating and, and you know, uh, tributing the, the atrocities. We don't have that. Uh, um, back home. We, we still have a very um, research-based discussions about the genocide. We do not have a, a kind of uh, um, personal relationship with, 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 the, with, the, with the conversation. And so the morning citizen really placed me in a position where I could have that ownership. I could say, this is the way we mourn as African, and this is the way we, we, are, um, we acknowledge our ancestors and we, we, we acknowledge their departure. And we try to appease them because we recognize that within this viewpoint of African religion, African spirituality, that the dead continue living. And until there is a sense of appeasement and until there's a, a dignity uh, um, that is given to our dead and to the histories, nobody can really rest. We cannot rest until that is done. So the morning citizen involved the, citizens, the citizenry to participate in these acts of mourning, these rituals of mourning that are coming from our cultures that have been buried, that have been taken away, um, so that we have some kind of, um, there's a remembrance aspect of that in, in so doing. And there's also a healing part of it, because the morning was really about dealing and confronting these issues, uh, confronting these, these horrors and, the, and, the, and the, the violence of the history, 
but then coming to a point of um, create, having our rituals and releasing that kind of burden, that, that, that pain that, that, that comes on our, on our bodies and that reaches deep within our DNA, because it's, it's within our DNA. The, the intergenerational trauma, we carry it. We have um, oral history from one of the dancers who, whose direct grandmother, great grandmother, sorry, was, was, was part of this, of this uh, genocide. And so his story comes in, um, and many other stories come in because we have a lot of what we call lost souls. Um, lost souls because they have no voice. The, the heads are in cabinets, in display cabinets, in various institutions in Europe or predominantly Germany. Um, and and, and uh, from as a black body, this continues living in my body as an archive. And I'm not at peace until my, my, the, 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 my, my ancestors have been returned and they're, they're given a dignified uh, um, burial or a dignified... Um, what honor, basically, yeah, yeah. So, so I'd like us to to take a look at the um, the video. I actually wanted to speak about also what uh, Sima and Mekulu Ida also talk, talked about their testimonies, and what um, what the artists and arts politics does is give us a more humane approach, a humane look at at this subject, this big subject because it's very easy for it to be put in a glass cabinet, to be discussed and dissected and analyzed and academically you know, proven that it's existed, it's there. But then there's also a human story that we don't really feel, that the emotional level that we, that we don't talk about, and that's this something that I've, I received from um, uh, Sima and Meida, Me that story, it, it's missing the heart part of, of, of this discussion. And the arts, the Morning Citizen, um, they try to bury us, brings that another a real human feeling. Mm. Mm. I, uh, I just have um, uh, one thought about that, because how you describe it, uh, it has a strong ritualistic aspect. It's like a contemporary, I would say, what you are doing is creating uh, contemporary rituals, uh, because this tradition of rituals has been destroyed also. Yeah. And this is, was, was really That's also... Very Bitte? <laughs> Ist kaputt? Uh, it's uh, damaged. So the, the last sentence was that um, that is uh, um, the, the traditional, this was my impression, so I, I do not know the situation really, but my impression was that this rituals, uh, which has been the base of, of your culture, are not alive. They are, has been erased. Um, and this is... Uh, this is just very much in the in, in, into the in, on the point um, of um, of all what you are saying. Um, Sorry. Um, and um, and th this I had talk also with Memory Bivar and and others that um, there is a knowledge. Uh, which is there, you know that this is there, you have to talk with the ancestors, uh, even if the, um, the rituals are not practiced. And so you are reconstructing or you, you are creating a kind of spiritual space, which is a very powerful cultural and, um, um, and um, political aspect, I, I, I think. Um, I, I, I feel it like also a political statement. It's a political statement about identity. Identity beyond national readings. And uh, uh, if you are talking about tra trauma, uh, Aleda Asman is saying the trauma is arriving at a point um, when uh, a story can't be told anymore if there is an interruption of a narrative. And you are reconstructing uh, narratives in a, in a way which are opening a horizon to the, f to the future. Is it, is it, can we describe it? Could you live with this idea of a contemporary ritual? With the young dancers that, that we have in the company and those, the performers, it was important that they, they brought their own rituals, um, that they brought their, that, but they were real. So with, with the discussions of, of the genocide, 
and the repercussions thereof in the, the continued legacy of, 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 of post-colonial Namibia um, and what it means and what it feels to have these kinds of things that are in, in the past but yet very real right now. And um, so to bring acts of rituals from their own homes that were, that were erased, that uh, it was a, it's a defiant way of, of, of really taking ownership of, of what you are and, and, how, and how you um, bring a realness to, to the story. Yeah. Um, I, want to, I also just want to say, obviously, I think all communities, we have our own different ways of mourning and everything. And specific to the genocide, um, you know, we have commemoration days. They're not, you know, holidays or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but we have commemoration days where those, the people within those communities gather in certain sites and commemorate their ancestors who were killed. Um, and in that, I think that is a way that has um, continued for decades from that sort of point. And we have um, songs and poems that all speak about those, ancest uh, those ancestors or, and also are very specific to the landscape of, you know, over there this is what happened and everything. And I think that is one way that the memory has continued, has been able to be passed down. But what I love about The Morning Citizen as well, and I, I think that's what's been lacking, um, in general is that it's been very much a history that is the burden of the communities, those specifically the Nama and Hero communities, and is not a national issue, is not a national mourning. And what I loved about The Morning Citizen was there was a moment where people from various communities were brought together to mourn in their own way, in their own ritual, but were mourning because we've all lost, you know? Um, and I thought that's, because I think that's the thing that is missing. A lot of other communities in Namibia don't think that it affects them. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, it, it, they don't really want to be a part of the conversation or anything. Um, and I think that's the big, well, for me, that's a really big issue. Yeah. yeah thank you. And the other question I have um, is um, uh, Germany, in Germany, we, of course, we have a, not a similar, but we have also a very strong uh, question of, uh, of memor memorizing uh, what has been destroyed uh, in a very short period uh, between 33 and 45. Um, uh, but therefore, we have archives. We have places where it's collected, where especially what we what we call Zeitzeugen, so the, the people who, who who survived and and could talk about that. And we are just arriving at a point where the last the last people of 95 years uh, are passing away. So this aspect of a living memory is is uh, is going away, and um, and so the the question of the archive uh, is, a, is a quite crucial question. Uh, for me, um, in terms of art, we have uh, the museums, we have the collections, and um, um, I, I, I'm just bringing in this question: Do you think it would be important to have such a place uh, where the where the the narratives, uh, your works, are collected? Because this is creating a kind of um, of access and um, uh, to to not to a national. I'm not, uh, I, I brought in this, this nation uh, topic because you have a national monument which, is, uh, which has a national narrative but which has nothing to do with what, what we are talking about. Yeah? I, th I think the, the, the conversation of museums and whether they, they, they can have this right to, to archive, I think museums in the current state, they, are, they, they become very static. Um, they, they have no sense of, of realness and they have no sense of um, community engagement. If you do not involve the community, and, and a, lot, a lot of the time we do not engage the community as to what, as to what their story is, as to what the real um, family stories, and, and bringing those alive into a museum space. We have a, a space that is there and you go in, you look, and you go out. There's no sense of engagement with, with, with these kinds of spaces. So for me, we have to relook at museums and, and, and question their existence and, and, and question their existence in the modern, in the modern context. 
um, how relevant are they really? Is it for a certain class of, of, of um, people or is it really for the people? <laughs> that is the question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I find the idea of memorializing very interesting. Um, cause, and the idea of museums and everything, because again, this is very much a Western idea of how things need to be. You know, you need to have a building, a monument, or something to mark something. Um, when for us, it's just completely different, you know? And you're talking about archiving, um, you know, the, 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 the lost survivors and that, you know, that living memory is gonna be gone. But I think in a way, what we've been doing with, you know, our grandmothers passing on those stories and everything, that is the living memory. It is here. It is amongst us. It is within us. Um, but I think a big thing, because we have, uh, I don't know, do we have a national monument? <laughs> we have the Independence Museum, which is an atrocity. <laughs> it is very, yeah, yeah. Come to Namibia and you'll understand. <laughs> um, but it's, it's yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I think we have a lot of work to do when it comes to memorializing and museums and everything. Um, but our biggest thing is that I think we need to create our national language of remembrance and memorializing instead of trying to put a, what's that, um, an obelisk, is that what it's called? Yeah. That, yeah, you know, which says what to a Namibian, that shape, you know? It, I think we really need to, you know, have those proper discussions and figure out what is our identity. And I think that is part of, you know, the, what this discussion is for, uh, it needs to become more of a national issue, more of a national form. Um, when, because we need to unlock that past to understand where we are and to understand what we, you know, what is our identity as Namibians, um, in order for us to figure out what then comes next. Sorry, if I, I uh, just have another question. Um, are you in contact with the NGOs? So that um, uh, is it the uh, the whole work of um, of the communities. Uh, is it connected to the art expression? So is it is it part uh, each uh, each uh, uh, of of, uh, of of this works? Is it, it's a part of the community work and of the um, the reconciliation work. Is it? Uh, are you in contact or are this different generations? It's for, from from our work that we just I'm going to to, to share with you now. It is the conversa the voices of the community is important for me as as a as an artist because it will be very um fast of me to eat, to talk to talk about a national story that is from one side so conversations with elders as 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 keepers of the history um conversations even with the young people who you know who we, we are always thinking oh, the young people don't really they're not engaged but they're really really engaged and they're curious to know about a lot of these histories but we don't take the time to 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 to, to speak with them so um conversations from the people was, is, is an important part of of my work um and also to just have a, a balance sense of, of, of the story so that this is not from one side. When I started doing the work and investigating and researching, there's a lot of material from the German, you know, the Germans write everything down and there's so much evidence of, of things. So it was easy to get that from the, from the National Archives. Um, but yet what, what I really appreciated was having um, a, a touch of, of a human, for a humanist um, story involved in the, in the, in the work. And that just brings about another level, you know, so it's not just a research-based pr presentation, but it's a human-based work, yeah. I like this very much, this idea of, um, of memory, um, which, is, uh, which has a different character as all the structures we have developed here in, in, in Europe, um, because we destroyed the oral traditions. Um, and, um, yeah, um, so the, I think the, the content and, and, and the work, I think it's, it's very clear from both of you. Um, the question is, um, uh, how do you place your work inside the society? So what is a place to show? Um, what are the communities? Um, uh, there is a national gallery, um, of course. Um, here you are in an open space. 
um, how do you, um, where do you place? Uh, where do you think is the place of your work in the society? Um, I think it's the, the place of it is the, the site-specific work that I, that I like to, to investigate. Um, and the, the video that you showed, the, the work was uh, produced at the Alta Feste. The Alta Feste is a colonial fort on the hills of, of Windhoek. And it's very much a, a colonial, colonial space. And we understand now later on in the research that it, it's actually a concentration camp where there was a lot of, um, from the, from within the city, um, at what they call the natives, they were brought to, 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 this, to the camp and to work there. So there's a lot of um, memory that is invisible. And the person that you saw talking represents that voice, that the voice of a lost soul, the voice of, of, a, uh, of, a, of a repressed voice that we don't get to hear. So the, the work is engaging within living spaces that have a history that can speak from within that, within the, the, the community's um, origin. And so it becomes an important part of me, so because the space, for me, it's also, it has stories to tell. And, um, and, and we feed off from those stories within, within the work that we create. Um, um, yeah, I wanted to just say about the video as well, about the, the involvement of the community. So, so it's, it's not a performance. Like, as, you, as you saw, there was no audience, and the audience is sitting and watching. But it, uh, it, it was a real work of the community, of the people, the audience, being involved in the rituals of mourning. So that we have the, uh, the national mourning that we, that, we, that we all cry for um, in my country. And we have a personal uh, responsibility within ourselves, and also use that as a transmo transformative power. Um, with the dancing at the end, we call that after tears. And after tears happens when, when all the rituals of, of, of burial and mourning has been completed and therefore you come to a point where everything is released and you come to a point of you can have your fat cakes, your fat cookies, your, you can have your tea and you can dance to, because you have released that, that burden. Yeah. You could share this. Uh <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I think, uh, and a big thing in Namibia is that we're, well, especially with the arts, is that we're very focused to the capital. Um, I mean, that's where the funding is, that's where the infrastructure is, it just happens to be like that. But I think there is a big push for us to move away from those sort of spaces, like you see with the site-specific work and with my research trying to leave um, the capital and go inside, it, go to the towns and communities and try to create work in those sort of spaces. So I think we are on our way to yeah, <laughs> to decentralizing the art, um, but also just to, to, to create the art for who it's supposed to be for. It's not because, I mean, in, in Namibia, our artist, our art community, our industry is so small. And so when you do exhibitions or performances, you're essentially showing it to the same people over and over and over again. You know, we don't get a lot of new audience members or anything like that. Um, I know the one good thing that at least some galleries have started to do is, is to push their education um, section. So they invite more schools, mm. but still without the context within our educational system, you know, for them to be shown these sort of things is also quite difficult. Mm. But I think we're trying to push it out. Um, another question in relation to the politics or to the politicians. Is there a cultural politic? Um, I think I'm talking about education, what you mentioned just now, and then the support of, of artists, of artistic institutions. Is this something uh, what would be important for your work or do you define yourself more independently so that you say, okay, I need this freedom to do it uh, in the way we do it? I, I am not a politician, <laughs> and I, I, I try to keep, even though the, wor the work is, has a political um, undertone to it a lot of the times anyway, I think it's important that we as artists we, we reflect what is happening in our spaces, in our land. I think that it, it, it will do an in, a great injustice if we are not um, um, telling our stories that are real and not just entertainment stories. And that's what we used to back home. We are used to entertainments. And so the politician's um, standpoint is that it is entertainment, but not, not recognizing the real power of what it, what it could do. Um, the discussions from, from these kinds of work can really go further. And so I, I try to be an, as independent as, as I can. 
because there is um yeah so that my voice as an artist is 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 um is free and there is no holding back as to what i can say and what i cannot say um, besides that, I have a very big um, job also as a national, um, our Independence Day celebrations, for example, they call us to do the, the, the big things, but that's just a, in a, it's a different arena altogether. Um, but the, the, the politicians' involvement in, in arts that speak to the people, it is very, it's a, it's, it's a very, it's a very far distance, a very far relationship, uh, I would like to, to conclude, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and I think also a big thing is that our, I mean, the ministry where the arts falls under is education, arts, and culture. Um, but <laughs> funding that comes down to the arts is very minimal. And I think even in the educational systems, um, a lot of art, uh, well, uh, uh, children aren't necessarily given that opportunity to even explore the arts or anything. I think it's a majority private schools that you'll get the arts, and in some schools where there's a bit of extra funding. Um, and I think that's a big issue. I, and I think if we were able to, to put more money into arts education mm. at a younger level, mm. I think we, maybe we would see a bit more understanding or, you know, of, of the power of the arts. Mm. Yeah. Um, I just want to bring in at this, uh, at this moment um, uh, uh, the potential of um, of an institution like uh, Academy of the Arts or German institutions, um, I think it was for for this conference. It was it was very very important to realize one work. So you work inside, even if it's a black box, which is a good uh, good space. But <laughs> um, um, to have the the possibility to, to see one of these works, I, and it I, it works, it functions absolutely. So, um, so it's decontextualized, of course, but um, there is a strong message, and um, it's something which is for me also very important to show in Germany and to make it known, and to see that there is another another um, voice um, in in. Uh, in Namibia, which is um, which fits absolutely into what we are discussing in the arts, um, or in 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 the anthropological uh, field, and so it would be very very uh, interesting, I think, also to bring your work to to Berlin, for example. Is this important? Could this be something what interests you? Interest you, or is it? Um, how can I explain? So it's, I, I think you are completely dedicated to the um, uh, to the landscape, to the communities. To, to uh, um, you have a mission, really, to uh, in, in Namibia, and I, I respect that, and I think it's very, very important. But sometimes it's also good to to decontextualize the work, just to speak about something what is happening in my country and which is not abstract you know it's not i think a book on what happened in uh, in namibia it's must le it's it's less important than to have an installation or uh, a theater piece or uh, this kind of of um, emotional um, transformation of situation uh, to show it also in another context um, i think i think it was sima who said it but um but essentially, this idea that we have to go around explaining, you know, our story, our pain, and everything, um, is quite tedious. <laughs> I think what, yeah, and I think also for Trixie, I think what is more important is what is happening at home. And I think for the arts, to ensure that the story of this history is known by all Namibians, and so that 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 essence of that 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 empathy can be shared so it can be more of a, a, a national movement to get this sorted is more vital yeah. um, <laughs> um, but I think there is something as well to you know come to these spaces and and sort of share our story mm. is is good you know the more people who will come to the table and listen that's it's great as well um, yeah same sentiments. I, I also believe that to, for us to really get a, a closer look at the human stories, that the human repercussions of this subject, it is to bring about artwork. And because artwork has that potential. 
but I also think that for me as an artist, it's far more important to have a conversation with, with, with my Namibian audience. It's more important to have an embodied experience from home and from the audience there. Um, I'm, not, I'm not responsible for the, the after effects of the, the, the German um, feeling of it, of the work. Uh, that's not really my, my point of departure. I think my, my point of departure is telling Namibian stories in the, in the way that are real and that are honest and not um, covered up it with some, yeah, some other way. Mm. But I'm very happy that you came to Berlin. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Um, I think there was a, there was also, um, so I've taken this uh, installation as well to Johannesburg in South Africa as well as we were just in Cameroon mm. just now for the burden of memory, which was, <laughs> um, but I, th I found that more exciting for us as, you know, fellow Africans to share our story with other Africans and to see, you know, the connections, if there's any sort of resemblance. And I think that's also another thing, like, you know, in high school, in school, we learn, I remember I learned the French Revolution um, and the Russian Revolution and the First World War and Second World well, I mean, the First World War and Second World Wars, you know, that affects us as well, so that makes sense. But, you know, I barely know the history of the rest of the continent, and that's really shocking. Um, and even when I was explaining to people, um, why we were going to Cameroon and that it involves all the other col you know, African um, colonies. They're like, what, just Namibia? You know, because for us in Namibia, that's all we sort of know is the Germans in Namibia. We don't know, oh, Rwanda. Oh, what? You know, you know that sort of stuff that, that's, that's not known. And so sharing, I think, our history and our stories and our art in the continent is a lot more exciting and necessary. Thank you very much. I think we uh, we got a very very strong impression of your work. Um, I'm I'm very happy that you are here, that we can show your work, and that we have a, and I got an idea of your work, even if it's a, a, a video of the real thing. Um, uh, I will open the floor for the public, um, five minutes, uh, something like that, and um, then we go just to the to the closing remarks. Is there a question from the public? I think you have been, yeah. Um, Good evening. Um, it's okay, I think. They hear the voice, that's the most important. <laughs> I'm the ambassador of Namibia here to Germany. Welcome. And I can only echo what the two Namibian artists are saying about, first of all, the value of art, value of museums in terms of narrating, but a different kind of museum in terms of narrating our history, first of all, to Namibians, but also in situ in Namibia itself to share it with others. Between Germany and Namibia, we're in the fortunate situation that the biggest number of tourists that are coming from overseas are first of all the Germans, followed also by South Africa, South Africans, and then of course of Angolans that are coming to Namibia as tourists. But this kind of thing of sharing the cultural articulation or sharing that with students because the site, historical sites where these memories are collected are strewn all over the country. From Ludritz, you know, the trail of violence during the colonial era, these are, it's, it, they are themselves the sites where this history uh, took place where the suffering took place, where the young people that are living around there themselves could be witnesses, sharing those experiences with tourists that are coming. If there's a structured manner in which kids are taught in schools to tell their own history to visitors, the others that are coming, whether it's whatever cultural form it takes. And I think uh, that's one of the talks 
that the two governments are discussing. How do we build a memory culture and a reconciliation culture uh, where Namibians, as you quite rightly in your story tell, that your story, when we were repatriating the remains, one of the bishops of the Evangelische Kirche said, we need to come to a stage where you tell your story in such a way that I accept it as my story and it becomes our story, our collective story. But that's a process that we have to engage in at all generations, especially to ensure that it becomes a living memory and not a past memory, but a living memory that is part of us that we take along from generation to generation. And you have two different genres of art forms through which you are telling that story, that you are telling that story, but that we share that with our young people at school, so that school drama associations at the village schools, the local, that they learn that way of relating and articulating. But this, and, and I was invited uh, just four weeks ago by uh, the Saxis Museum Verband uh, over the same topic about dealing with our colonial past, particularly with regard to restitution of art objects, human remains and all of those things. All of that takes money, costs money. And that is the shortcoming that Isabel is talking about, that there's not so much funding available. But restituting those objects is just one. But we have to assume responsibility that we have to assist the communities, whether it's Namibia, whether it's Cameroon, whether it's Benin, where these objects that are restituted have to be conserved in spaces within frameworks where it becomes available not only to present generations, but preserved so that it's available for humanity. So that tourists, when they come over and 100 years from today, that will be able to see those objects. And I think the big job only starts when these elements are restituted, that we should pro pro uh, provide suitable frameworks in which they will be stored, honored, preserved, and shared in a collective cultural experiences. For the, and I think that's where the big challenge is lying. Assume responsibility, restituting objects, because Africans have big difficulties, difficulties to apply for Schengen visas in order to be able to see cultural objects, whether it's in Berlin, Berlin Paris, uh, London or Brussels, where all these historical museums are there. And they should be restituted uh, to, to the African countries where they come from. But that we provide them with the means to store them in such a space where researchers would have access to it, where people who want to visit it can come and see them. And that's where the big challenge is. Maybe the cultural museums have to look in terms of how they would support creating appro appropriate structures where young people, Isabel and Trixie, can share their artistic expressions with ongoing generations at schools to be the next ones that are portraying and sharing that with all the tourists that are coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do, do you want to, to react on that? Or? But um, you can be very proud to have such an incredible young generation of artists who are doing uh, a very, very strong work. And I hope you have seen the installation downstairs. And we, we, I think we have to communicate it also back to Namibia that um, it would be very fruitful to have an exchange um, on this level. Uh, for us, it would be very important, I think. Thank you. Another uh, comment or a question? I think uh, you are waiting for the reception. Um, but uh, so, Sima. Yes, um, I'm, I feel extremely honored to have been able to listen to these young two women. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm sitting and I'm feeling the, 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 the tears in my stomach. I'm, I'm feeling it and, you know, I'm so tired of 
having to be intellectual, having to, to, having to be legal, having to, to be academic, having to read books, you know. Um, I just want to be me. I, 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 I want to feel, and in the past, I've, um, I've felt so obliged to quote from books and, you know, to, to look for scientific evidence while the evidence is inside me. And I feel, I feel so happy that there can be young people who are able to express this because I do not believe that uh, um, in Namibia we are allowed to be emotional, to mourn, to express our pain in our way. The two governments have to decide for us how things should be done, how it should be structured, how artifacts should be returned to Namibia. It is not returned to the rightful owners, those people from whom it was taken, and the pain that they feel, the, 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 the being given the space to receive something that is yours, and to do with it as you please, and to and, and to be able to connect with it in a way that you feel you need to connect with it. And this is, this is the difficulty that, that, that I continuously feel um, with, with, you know, at, with people who, who, who make decisions, that that gap, that gap is seen as something that is interfering in something that other people want to achieve. And I, th I, I see... This, this, your, your emphasis on community, your emphasis on, on, on mourning being something that we must do for ourselves, that uh, um, uh, uh, memorialization is something that should be for us, not for tourists, not some museum that stands and then people can come and see it's, 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 it's about us. It's about us being able to unburden ourselves. It's about us being able to cry in the way that we want to cry. So I am tremendously thankful for these two women and the work that they are doing because they are expressing what the people want to, to express. Thank you so much for that opportunity. Thank you so much, Seema, for this. Uh, I think uh, it's such a strong statement. Um, we, we keep it like this, this. Thank you very much for being here. It's really a great honor to have you here and you all. And we just give the podium to the closing remarks of um, Wolfgang. <laughs> and uh, Thomas Krüger and Jesse. Do, do you take over, Wolfgang? <laughs> the closing remarks. <laughs>